I won't be that long, so I should finish. Yes. Okay, so, so what about the distribution of K infinity, the total number that get absorbed at the origin? So, of course, if we know the PGF of K infinity, we'll know all, all, we, all, we, need, uh, all we need to about K infinity as a random variable. So let's define these functions Ws of x now. Of course, what we were looking at before was the probability that k infinity was zero. That's corresponding to W. Oops, that should be a that should be an x there. That's corresponding to uh, W zero of x, um, and we know that that satisfies this KPP with the boundary conditions naught and one. Um, so it's it's not hard to convince yourself now that, um, well, this thing is going to be a martingale, right? Because I'm taking a limit random variable and I project it back to FT. Whenever you do a conditioning on FT, right, if I call that my MT, that gives me a martingale automatically. It's the expectation of a random variable conditional on a filtration. So this automatically gives me a martingale because it's um, probabilities. It must be uniformly integrable. Okay, so it must actually tend to the indicator that k infinity equals naught, almost surely. And in fact, given ft, what is the probability nobody gets absorbed? Well, you look at who's alive at time t. So actually, this should be uh, this should be n live t. Look at who's alive. Um, uh, actually, I want to look at. Um, N live, I want to look at N live plus absorbed probably. Because if anyone's been absorbed, there'll be a zero. If anyone's been absorbed, there'll be a zero in here because it's zero at the origin and then will be zero. Um, so basically your product over all of the particles um, and each of them has got this probability W X U T, that's the position where it is at time T. That's the probability that it doesn't have any individuals in its subpopulation that get absorbed. And that's got to be true for all of the individuals. So we've got time T here. We've got to look at all of those. Nobody in his population can be absorbed. Nobody in his, nobody in his. They're all independent, so you product them. And if there was anyone, if there was anyone that had died down here, that would give you an omega of zero entry, and that would automatically kill it. Okay, so that, that accounts, that accounts um, nicely. So this is now a product martingale. And now we can do the same thing that we did, that we do before, except now we're going, I'm going to stop particles whenever they hit level Y. So I'm going to think of um, a, level, a level X here where I start. I'm going to think of a level Y. Uh, that's the origin where I'm killing. And I'm going to stop any particles. Instead of stopping them at the origin, I'm going to stop them prematurely, right? I'm going to stop them prematurely at Y, and all the rest are going off maybe up there. So I could, I could also stop particles that ever hit level Y and call the total number that, that ever reached level Y, I'll call that KY infinity. So K... K infinity is the total number that reached the origin, and KY is going to be the total number that ever reach um, level Y. So, of course, K infinity is the same as K zero infinity, right? There's the, they're the same things. So instead, if I stop all the particles that ever reach level Y, then all of these things are all WY, and the product is over exactly how many are in the product, which is KY infinity. And so that's the same as looking at starting at X minus Y and looking at the number that reached the origin, just do a shift, look at this distance. It's the same as starting at X minus Y. And because W is strictly increasing, it's got an inverse. And so now if I just choose S and Y to be the inverses of one another, what this allows me to say is that 
all of all of the generating functions. So this is this is really nice now. All of the generating functions are just a shift. So this is my this is my wx function goes from naught to one. And all of the other generating functions, basically it's this picture, I find the level S there, and then I find where that is, that's W inverse of S. And basically this is my, this is now my PGF. That's my solution, WS, right? That's my WS solution. So basically I just shift, I, I'm building, I'm building all of the PGFs, all of the PGFs, I'm building them out of the one solution. So you might think that we have to, we have to do more work, but it turns out that, that this, this one solution is all you need to have. That's all you need to get all of the other WSs. So the PGF is entirely encapsulated in shifts of the W function of the of the, the probability that nobody reached the origin. So again, it was a really nice result. Um, and in fact, this is this is very closely related to again these stopping lines when Nevers showed that essentially, if you take BBM on these on these stopping BBM would drift on these stopping lines, then you get a continuous time Golden Watson process, which is subcritical, and it's got a certain infinitesimal generator which is related to the w of x so so we've got a representation for all of the gen pgfs so of course once you've got the pgf we can do loads so um so in particular um now we know loads because we know loads about the w function we know the WSs, the PGFs, are all just written in terms of the W, so we know plenty about it. So um, in particular, um, there's a stronger theorem that, that um, is not just true. So this was true for S in naught one, but actually I can do the same thing um, in more generality. And it, it also turns out that there's, there's this critical S naught, which is bigger than one. So there's some S naught that, that's strictly bigger than one, where the PGF is still well-defined, the probability generating function is still well-defined as long as S is less than S naught. So S naught is, is the place where the PGF blows up. So that's the radius of convergence of the, of the, um, of the PGF. Uh, of k infinity. So there exists this finite S naught that's bigger than one. And in fact, that's really important because knowing that we can, we can actually then recover the asymptotics um, for the getting large values. So we can get the tail estimates on the probability that we get a large number of individuals absorbed at the origin. And it looks like the derivative of W evaluated uh, uh, the s equals s naught, uh, and it's got this geometric decay, like one over s to the n, which fits right because that's when this blows up. So if s naught is the s naught is the borderline case, so that would cancel out this, and then you so you get exactly this tail estimate um, that comes out uh, from from working here. Um, so this was kind of an analog to. Pascal Maillard had, had done it in the mu less than root two beta case, but there there were much fatter tails. These are these are quite fast decaying tails because S naught's bigger than one, so you've got geometric decay. Um, so just and just to to summarise, so this really is the last slide now. Lucky you. Um, so this is kind of a summary of everything that we've seen. So we've got our PGF um, for k infinity. We're only in the case where the, the, the mu is very big. So we're heading away from the, the origin. Um, so if S is bigger than 0, 0.1, the PGF is just a shift. So this is just a shift of the, uh, a shift of the WS function, the, the, the WX function rather. On the other hand, 
um, if we look at S bigger than one, but but going up to the radius convergence S naught and including, importantly, including S naught, then WS, all of those PGFs can be given in terms of, again, a shift of WS naught. So you look at the, so there's basically, there's basically two extremal solutions. There's the, the hitting prob the probability that nobody gets absorbed. And there's this other special uh, extremal function at the boundary of convergence WS naught, where you stick an S naught there. And with those two solutions, you can build all of the other PGFs. So it's a very nice result that you've basically got all of them as an expression of a shift of one or the other. Um, so there's, there's basically two, two fundamental solutions. Um, there's the, if that's the level one, there's the, there's the WX that looks like that. And then there's, a, there's another solution that looks like this, and this is the WS0 of X. And this derivative, it turns out that this derivative the derivative here, the, this function has a zero derivative. It leaves the origin horizontally. And those are the two functions. Um, those are the two functions that you need to know. And all of the others are just shifts of those. You just truncate them, shift along and truncate. Um, so all of them are the solution um, that approach one fastest and they all solve the KPP, but you vary the initial condition. Um, so this is, uh, I guess this is S naught as well. Uh, and this is uh, naught. Um, and so they all satisfy the KPP as before. Um, they've all got an asymptotic that looks the same and there's just the coefficient that depends upon S. So they've all got the same um, rate of converging to, to, to one. Um, and they've all got the probabilistic representation, except we just have to modify before we just had one. But to do the general S, we just need to stick the minus S to the power K infinity in there. So they've all got a nice explicit probabilistic representation. And this tildes the Q infinity. If you, there's a nice limit as X tends to infinity, and that gives you this constant BS um, when you stick infinity there. As I say, we've got the, um, we've also got uh, the, the um, more general uh, series expansion where you just have to modify the, that to be a BS rather than the B that we had before, but it's the same function. The only problem is that we don't actually, we, we don't know what the radius of convergence is, so we don't know how many of these solutions above one that that works for. We think it's all of them, but we never proved it. And the very final thing I'll say that is a Yaglom result, um, that um, if X goes to infinity, so if X goes to infinity, um, then K infinity is going to zero, right? Like if you start further and further up and your particles are drifting, then nobody's gonna get to the origin. So it's a very difficult event. The further up you start, the harder it is to get anybody to reach the origin. But if you condition on it being positive, strictly positive, then you get like a Yaglom result. It's a bit like conditioning on this branching process that, that, that Never studied uh, surviving. And you get a Yaglom limit theorem that says that the as X tends to infinity, the number that do reach the origin conditional on at least one getting to the origin, it's just a small number. You know, it's really hard. One, if only one gets there, and you can see it in the spine decomposition. If you force one to get there, you've just got it decreased, just a finite number that come off that have some contribution. And that the PGF is explicitly in terms of these Bs again. That's it. Sorry for going on too long. Thank you so much. Are there any questions or comments?